Hello everyone, reporting today for first update stop, Abba Boss. And with me here, I have Team 15006, Nerdvana from St. Petersburg, Florida. As they get ready for the Florida State Championship in early March, they're coming in as part of the winning alliance at the Florida Gulf Coast League and having the current state high score at 242 points. We're going to take a deep dive into their turret, extension, and all other fantastic parts of their robot coming up on first update stop. This video on First Updates Now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. SOLIDWORKS is free for first teams. Over 80% of US engineering schools and 370,000 plus companies use SOLIDWORKS to design great products. SOLIDWORKS can help you design a great robot on desktop or on the cloud. Go to SOLIDWORKS.com first to register your team. Check out our all new FTC content coming to Fund's YouTube in February, including new hosts from the FTC community. We'll have resource guides, top 10 moments, behind the bots interviews, and walkthroughs to help your FTC team improve at youtube.com slash first updates now. All right guys, why don't we get started with your drivetrain? It looks pretty compact, and I'm sure that Mechanic Drive has been working out pretty well for you guys this season, so give us a really brief overview of it. So we use the 312 Go Build RPM motors on our drivetrain, and we have them geared up at a two to one ratio so we can get some extra speed. And then we also utilize two dead wheels so that we can localize an autonomous. Got it. And so are you guys using plastic chain or metal chain for your drive train? Yeah, this year we made the choice to switch to plastic chain. Okay, and was there like, what was the reasoning behind that? Well, someone recommended to us that we use plastic chain instead of metal chain. And at first we didn't really think it was gonna work, but it actually ended up working great and we haven't had any issues with it at all. Sure, mm -hmm. sure. And so going into the Florida State Championship, do you guys have any plans to change anything about your drivetrain or just everything's set and working? Everything's set and working and we're just going to keep the drivetrain the same. Okay, got it. And so jumping in a little bit into the programming for your drivetrain, what are you using for autonomous? Like are you guys using any libraries? Uh, and if so, which ones? Uh, we utilize the Roadrunner library uh, to localize an autonomous. So the two dead wheels and the gyro inside the control hub work really well for us because we don't have to do much driving in autonomous. Sure. And so also like in the teleop period, do you guys have any automations or like little uh, control algorithms that really help your drivers drive very smoothly relating to your drive trade or is it more with the other subsystems on your robot? Uh, yeah. In the teleop period, we actually utilize uh, uh, Thing that we coded ourselves it's a uh, heading auto correction for the teleop so the robot will always look go to the heading that it's initialized at unless you twist it with the um with the the twisting movement so in case you run into a pole or another robot you don't have to worry about manually fixing the rotation of the robot it just uses a pid loop to correct back to it wow yeah that's that's really cool and have you guys had any problems with like drift with the imu or anything like that affecting your heading lock yeah, the drift from the IMU can get pretty bad once we really get into the matches, but we usually just fix it a little bit with a little bit of twisting, and it ends up being less uh, actual like manual takeover than it would be before the algorithm was implemented. Yeah, that makes sense. All right, let's jump into your guys' claw. Uh, looks like you guys have some sensors up there, so first give an overview of it, and then we'll talk about like the sensors and different iterations you've gone through this season. So for the claw, we use a... Uh... Um, we use a go build a torque servo to grab and it runs both claws with a gearing and then we also utilize a torque servo on the wrists so that we can actuate wrist movement so we can slam dunk on the poles. Uh, one of the innovations we're really proud of this season is this servo that has a retractable distance sensor. So we utilize the distance sensor in autonomous at the end of this claw to do a kind of scan search for the pole so that in case the pole is tilted we always get it, get it every time. Sure, and are you using this distance sensor also like in Teleop to do a similar thing or like detect where the code is and picking it up at the right time or anything like that? Or do you have plans to further use this in different parts of the game? Uh, we might implement it in Teleop, but we haven't done that yet. Okay, got it. And so have you, how have you iterated on your claw throughout the season? Or was it sort of something that you just got right the first time? It was not something we got right the first time, and there have been many iterations of the of the claws. We started with simple go build the structure pieces, just mounted together on a servo for basic grabbing motions. And we moved on to 3D printed ones that were printed um, at a slight offset. So they would grab the cone at an angle so you would fit perfectly, but it wasn't consistent and really didn't work very well. And we had our mentor uh, helped us design these 3D printed ones and these fit much better. And on the inside here, 
is a cut open part of a wheel that we've just uh, attached here. It works very well now, and we're really proud of uh, how far it's come. Sure. Yeah, and so, you know, looking at the Florida State Championship, I'm sure you guys would like to be part of that winning alliance again. So do you have any plans to change anything on your claw, or is it just, like, really working well? Uh, we don't plan to change anything on the claw. The claw's been working really well for us, so we're going to keep it the same. Yeah, that, that's awesome. And can we see some of that actuation motion uh, if you guys have, like, your controllers hooked up and stuff? Uh, yeah, yeah, we can do that. Um, let me back up a little bit just so I don't... Um... So you can see now if you point the camera down, it'll actuate uh, like this. Okay. And then we can go up to score on the uh, the poles. Got it, got it. And, you know, we saw that turret motion right then, so why don't we talk about it a little bit more. Walk us through your turret, how it's made. I think every team has a really unique and different construction of their turret. So how is it made and how do you power it as well? So our turret works differently than a lot of other turrets. So a lot of other turrets work by having a motor in the center and having the assembly shift around it. But we have an assembly that sits in the center with a 3D printed spacers, a 3D printed gear, and a lazy Susan bearing. And we have a motor that rotates on the outside of it, which rotates the upper assembly around the turret. Sure. And so have you guys like changed your turret design over the season or like was this something that you tested before the season started or was this just like your guys' first go at it? We wanted to use a turret last year, but we just didn't have the resources necessary to make that work. But we did go through a couple variations of this turret. You can see like all the structure pieces here and tensioning here as well as structure pieces inside the U-channel. All of these are made to make it more stable and more accurate because we had a problem where it was like flinging the assembly because there was no weight on the other side. So we had to tension it from the bottom and across here and up here to make it a lot more stable. Sure. And it actually works yeah. very well. Yeah, and now. I see like one thing is your guys' turret, is it like your the rest of your robot, is it centered over the turret, like your lift and uh, claw and everything? So is that like an issue you guys have had to deal with in programming or has it really not been too much of an issue? Uh, it, it's kind of unfortunate, but uh, you know, we would prefer it uh, a little bit less centered, but this is just kind of how we ended up building it and we've stuck with it ever since. So it does end up being kind of an issue in programming because, you know, if you based on which autonomous side you're on, a lot of the rotation values are flipped and it makes it hard to have like clear mac uh, macros in the teleop period because you have to have different macros based on which side of the pole you're dropping off of just because of that issue. Sure. Uh, so that's kind of unfortunate, but yeah. Yeah, and so, you know, looking looking into the teleop period and, like, automations you guys have for your turret, I know definitely seems like you have one to just go, like, from picking up in that human player substation to that first high pole. Like, what other automations do you guys have and how do you implement them? Uh, uh, we pretty much have all of our scoring and picking up uh, mechanisms automated in teleop. So we have eight different macros available to our drivers so that they can score on the high, medium, and low poles from a variety of different angles while still only having to click a few buttons. And so we also have a manual control override in case the encoders initialize improperly at the end of autonomous so that we can bring everything back and reset it and then click a button to reset the encoders and go back to our macros. Wow, so you said you have eight different macros for your drivers. So, uh, you know, talk to me a little bit about that button layout because having been like the operator on a team for three, four years, I definitely know how tough it can be to like memorize a bunch of different buttons. So how do you guys do that and make sure your drivers never make a mistake? Yeah, it's, it's, pretty, it's pretty complicated, but basically how we do it is we have Y, X, A, and B, each being a low, a different two. We have two for low poles, one for high pole and one for medium pole. And then dependent on which side of the field you're on, so if you're on the left or the right side, you basically will hold down the right bumper, then click Y. So that would be right side, high pole, or you hold down the left bumper and click Y, and that would be left side, high pole. And so we do that for based on the perspective of the robot where you are in the field, and that allows us to hit every single pole on the field with just those eight macros and only these four buttons along with the bumpers. Yeah, that that's really cool. I'm sure a lot of teams could use a system like that. Uh, with their turrets and so the next thing I want to talk about is your guys's lift you guys do have a very quick uh, extension system so walk me through how it's built and if you guys have any plans to change anything for the Florida State Championship 
Uh, so the lift it used to be uh, bevel gear, uh, bevel gear tilt system, but we ended up having a lot of trouble controlling the bevel gear tilt system just because it was so unsteady, and a lot of times it would come down really fast. I wasn't really sure how to fix it in programming, so we ended up just buying this uh, super worm gear drive from GoBuilda, and we hooked up this uh, 435 to that, and it works great. It's a little bit slow, but it does the job great, and it always holds its position, which makes programming in autonomous and teleop super consistent and easy. Sure. Uh, we also sure. and so, use an 11. Oh, sorry. Yeah, and so you mentioned that like it's a little slow. So is that something like you're looking to speed up for the state championship, or are you just going like, to keep it because you know it's consistent and works well? We're going to keep it because we know it's consistent and works well, and it's pretty much the balance we could find between being able to lift up the arm when it's fully extended, so having enough torque to do that, but also being able to have a good amount of speed. Okay, gotcha, yeah. And now going directly like to your extension system, let's talk about that and how it works. Uh, so our... You want to get to um, if we turn the robot the other way, you can see it a little bit better. Um, so the main components of the extension is a Go Build a Viper slide. Um, along with that, we have all the rigging, which goes on this 3D printed spool. We had to 3D print a new one because the one before kept breaking and snapping because of how much tension is on the string. And then as we move up the arm, we get to this little wrist powered by a servo, and it enables us to kind of slam dunk on the poles. And then we have the distance sensor and the claw mechanism. And one thing I wanted to mention was we use an 1150 RPM on the slide, which does get kind of warm, but it ends up having enough torque in the end to run the slide effectively. Sure. And so, uh, you know, talking about your teleop automations with, like, both your tilt and extension system, what automations do you guys have there, and how have they been working out so far? Um, we basically uh, have the automation set up so that, you know, when you want to score on the high pull and you're on the right side and you click those combination of buttons, it'll basically do the extension, and then you just have to click a button to grab, and then it'll do the retraction, rotation, and tilting all automatically for you so you don't have to actually touch the joysticks at all and it just does it automatically then you just use the drivetrain to make sure you're lined up with the pole properly yeah that that's really cool so nerdvana looking forward to the florida state championship i know you guys definitely want one of those tickets to worlds and that means either being the inspire winner or winning alliance captain or you know maybe even first selected so what's your plan robot wise to make that happen like are there any changes you're looking at doing um, or is it just going to be keep practicing and making sure things are consistent we're going to get a lot of driver practice in and making our autonomous the best that it can be like super consistent with the use of sensors and uh, pretty much that's what we're going to go for. I think we have a solid enough bot we could do it and uh, mechanically. And we just got to work on programming and driver practice. Awesome. Yeah. And one last question before we end the interview is I know autonomous like interference or like robots both going for that same high junction has been an issue, uh, especially we've seen like recent high level gameplay. So do you guys have a plan to like uh, like be aware of that or like make your robot respond to that so you don't miss any placements or are you just going to go for a different junction? Yeah, I... We actually gained some inspiration from another team today. And so what we're doing is we're going to order some distance sensors and put them on the front of the robot so that we can detect if another robot is there trying to score on the high pole. And instead of going for the high pole, it'll score on the medium pole so that we can you know, effectively not have to worry about interfering with them and have a consistent autonomous. Yeah, that, that's fantastic. So I think we'll end the interview here. Nerdvana, thank you so much. I'm sure everyone's really looking forward to see you play at the Florida State Championship in early March. I believe March 4th. But until then, good luck with your practice and working on your robot and software. Reporting for First Updates now, I'm Abbas. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. This video on First Updates Now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. SOLIDWORKS is free for first teams. Over 80% of U.S. engineering schools and 370,000 plus companies use SOLIDWORKS to design great products. SOLIDWORKS can help you design a great robot on desktop or on the cloud. Go to SOLIDWORKS.com first to register your team. Check out our all new FTC content coming to Fund's YouTube in February, including new hosts from the FTC community. We'll have resource guides, top 10 moments, behind the box interviews, and walkthroughs to help your FTC team improve at youtube.com slash first updates now. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos.
keep the conversation going, and provide your input to our content. Watch our live shows at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Join our Discord at discord.gg forward slash first updates now, and check out Fun FTC on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, and First Updates Now on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter. <laughs>